Hello again, COP 1000 students. This uh, topic for this presentation is software development life cycle. It is a cycle and it continues over and over and over again. Software development life cycle typically begins with some type of need or requirement. So we usually start up here in the red and traverse this way and go around and around and around. So basically it begins with some need or requirement. Typically you will have a client and the client will need some type of software designed or developed. And uh, probably why you're here in school and that's how we're gonna get paid by developing software. So in short, the client has a need uh, for software that does something, solves some problem, uh, and so on. So the client has the need, and then what happens is you probably set up a meeting with the client, maybe go to the client's site, discuss what he needs or she needs or what the company needs, uh, and you make sure you have a thorough understanding before you actually begin to design a solution. Um, you will, as you design your solution, you're going to use various tools. Some of those tools are mind mapping. I highly recommend you Google mind mapping or brainstorming or whiteboarding or groupthink or whatever technique or tool helps you and your team uh, design or plan a solution if there is a team. Uh, so that's what you're going to use to begin to design or plan a solution. Once, <coughs> once you have your design completed, that is time to implement the design or another word would be to code the design. So this is where you actually put your fingers on the keyboard and start to type uh, code. After you design and then code, you will test and test and test and test some more. Uh, you want to make sure the code that you wrote is perfect, foolproof, and produces accurate results. Make sure it works correctly. Uh, as you're coding, uh, again, this is a cycle. You can back up any steps, any number of steps necessary to make sure you're doing what's supposed to be done. So after you test, 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 it's time for the evolution phase or the implementation phase. I don't like this word down here, but the installation phase possibly would be a better word. Let's try the word installation. So I changed it. So here's where evolution or installation phase, this is where you actually install your code at your client's site, teach your client how to use it. Um, this is where the client does use it. And hopefully as the program evolves, the client says things such as, hey, it could do what, it does what you, what I asked for, but can it also do this? Or could it also do that? And that's the beginning of the next version. Um, that means quite possibly you're going to get paid a second time. That's what you're after. That's what uh, you're hoped for. A new version means you get paid again. As I said, in an ideal world, you will be creating a new version of this software more than once. Version one, two, three, every so often uh, it'll evolve. I'm going to run through a quick sample project. So assume you have a client that needs to automate his or her company's record keeping system. What would you do? You'd probably go to the client's site and discuss the client's needs. You would want to learn how they do what they do now. You will want to gather as much paperwork as possible, samples of what they do, reports, records, record keeping systems, uh, sample transactions, a sample of everything that they do. So as you're there, you're going to be asking questions, 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 and also gathering uh, hard copies of what they do now. You would also take notes. So you ask questions, gather documentation, and take notes. 
So the meeting ends, you go back to your company, hypothetically, and back in your office is where you and your team would review and discuss what you saw, what you heard. This is the beginning of the design phase. As I said at the beginning of this, in the design phase, you would use various tools such as mind mapping, brainstorming, whiteboarding. <clears throat> you would eventually take your thoughts and ideas and create a design tool document. And in a different video, we'll talk about the four different design tools, which would be the IPO chart, the pseudocode, flow chart, and structure chart. So those are my four different design tools. Uh, it's possible that I go back and meet with the client over and over and over again. As I design, I may have more questions. As I design, I may have more ideas. Um, so I would be going back and forth. That's why it's SDLC, Software Development Lifecycle. So as I design, I'm going to what I call uh, death check my code. And how do I do that? Before I actually put my fingers on the keyboard, I'll come up with maybe some pretend or sample data and I'll run it through my design to see if I get the expected results or output. So before I code, I, I'm sorry, eventually I begin to code. And as I code, I code, I test, I code, I test, I test, I test, I code, I test, and so on. I may back up and go back to design. Remember, it's cyclical. Um, at this point, maybe I feel pretty good about my uh, solutions, so I might wish to meet with the client, not to demonstrate, but just to demo the program. Not to demonstrate like a completed product, but demo where I am so far, show it to the client and ask them, hey, am I on the right track? Are there any things that I should be changing or adding as I move forward? Uh, so eventually I'm done, the client's uh, agrees. I've tested, debugged, everything feels good. It's time to install on the client's site. I go and I stall, I train, I monitor the progress as they, they, the employees, begin to use the software. And maybe there might be some bugs or hiccups and I fix those as necessary. Well, once I have this in production at the client's site, Hopefully I open the client's eyes to what is possible. Uh, you hear the client ask, hey, can this program do this or that or this? I will promise you this, I know my answer. I don't care the question. Yes, I can. Yes, it can. Yes, yes, and yes. Uh, in a future version, I can code anything. If I personally can't code it, I'll hire somebody that can for me. So if it can be done in code, we'll do it. So the answer is yes. That's basically it. That is my software development life cycle. Remember, it's cyclical and it's, it's a part of any software development process in any language, in any class you're going to take. All right, that's enough for this video. See you in the next.